Deutschman. I'm running for regional chair. Uh, I want to thank uh, Social Development Center for putting this on today. It's a great opportunity to come out and meet with people to discuss in a different format the issues of the day and have some very good and sometimes intense dialogue, but intense is good because, as they say, diamonds are made from friction, right? And so hopefully we can uh, create something that's diamond-like in our region. Um, just a little background about me. I'm a personal injury lawyer. I live in Air. I was born and raised in Waterloo. Uh, I, am, uh, I was a mayor of North Dumfries Township and regional councillor from 2010 to 2014. So, during this campaign, uh, I've been holding town halls throughout the region. Uh, started August 1st in, in each of the townships and uh, seven additional town halls in the cities. And the town halls are similar to this format here today because I wanted an opportunity to engage with people to have a discussion about the issues so that I could hear from people about what were the issues of concern to them because as a, uh, as a candidate for elected office, I'm putting forward my thoughts and visions, but I'm a lawyer. I'm not an expert in a whole lot of areas. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a planner. But I am a representative of the people, and I need to hear what the people have to say and what they're concerned about. And so town halls, I think, are a great way to get that feedback. It's not just showing up at an event, and that's important. Uh, elected representatives need to get out into the community to see what is happening in the community. But at the same time, we need to create a process for more meaningful discussion so that we can tap into, we can tap into the knowledge of the people in the community who want to share their thoughts and ideas with the elected representatives. And I don't feel we do that enough. When I was mayor in North Dumfries Township, I started doing town halls in each of the wards during the year. So there would be four wards, we would have a township. Does that mean one that left? Okay, perfect. We would have a, 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 town, a town hall in each of the uh, wards. So recently, uh, and some of the issues we talked about today were, are things that have come up quite a bit. Affordable housing, which is the number one issue facing our community and facing local government. We talked about transit. And I just want to share quickly with you a transit story. Uh, I did a transit town hall on Friday. I took the GRT from uh, Conestoga Mall down to Ainsley and back and had an opportunity to engage with a lot of people. I met people like Pierre from Ghana, Bertha from Mexico, who's a psychologist who's been here for two years, uh, came to Canada because she was concerned about the safety of her two teenage sons and is really enjoying it, and really gained a true appreciation and understanding for how important transit is for people, especially newcomers to our country. So I look forward to continuing the town hall concept uh, throughout the region, throughout the year, and continuing to engage because I think it's important for politicians to hear what you have to say as we put together a plan for the future. And my time is up. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Town halls are always great. I remember during my term as a councillor at City of Waterloo for two terms that uh, we initiated uh, town hall meetings, and those were always things to always look look uh, look look forward to. So I have a number of different tables here. We talk about a number of different things in here, including transit, how to optimize it, how should be should it be free or not, or how do we make it affordable, make sure everybody can have transit, because we know transit is absolutely fundamental. Everybody should be able to get to any part of the region without any difficulty, and we must make sure we can help make that happen. We talk a little bit about the role of the region in intensification, we talk about public engagement, and these type of things in here. I was certainly encouraged to have this discussion at least once per year perhaps a little bit more often in different parts of the, of the region as well. And we talked about the cycling network. We talked about how do we improve our public transportation, how important public transport, how important cycling is that. And so always a story I like to tell. So I was on the, uh, on the uh, Active Transportation Committee in Waterloo and actually set out our transportation network we have in Waterloo. And we were putting a snippet of our trail here, a snippet of our trail there, a snippet here, a snippet there, and we were putting all these trails on. And I say, well, trails should be a should go from somewhere to somewhere. And so what I did is I, I, I wrote, I took, took the map, circled out a trail net, a, a, a trail net a network, now called the Waterloo, and four connectors in from the suburbs. I said, you know what? Every next trail, we're going to go fill those nine gaps. And lo and behold, three years later, without spending an extra nickel, we had a fabulous network in Waterloo that we're trying to expand. And we put some wayfinding on it, and that's really great. But well, we need to do that at the regional level as well. What's that regional transit system look like for cycling and for trails? And get those region and the cities all, all, all on board. Then I look at our, our social services. 
One of my fundamental in in uh, priorities is investment in social, in social infrastructure. Develop an ecosystem of our social services to deal with the homelessness, to deal with drugs, to deal with the opioid crisis. And what I see is lots of silos of support services out there, lots of silos. But where is the, where is the cohesive plan? And just like trails, let's put out what that philosophy is. What's the, what's the direction we want to have that social ecosystem work for all of us? Right from the person suffering from drug addiction and opioid addiction to someone who's maybe just starting to have a real tough time at home and starting to drink. What is that whole, what, how can we build that network and how can we fill those gaps and take charge of that? I think that's absolutely fundamental that we, we do that and that's what I call the social infrastructure. So we have Mr. Ken Sealing leaving here after 33 years. I think we need a leader who understands our diversity is our strength and that every voice needs to be heard and every voice needs to be respected. I think we need a leader who's got corporate business experience and also knows what it takes to move her bureaucracy, like I did when I was a regional councillor, into new directions. We need a leader who's not afraid to tackle the most difficult issues and has got a track record of success. And we need a leader with integrity who knows how to get things done. I look around, I am that leader. I look for your support on October 22nd. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My name is Jay Issa. I'm running for the regional chair. Um, I sat around a few tables, I don't remember, three or four, and I heard you nice and clear. And one of the things I would like to bring to everybody's attention is affordable housing is an issue. And I, I sat there, and I sat there, and I heard that our region of Waterloo built 2,500 houses in the last 18, 18 years. So if you divide that one by 18 years, that's 138 average per year. And, and then I heard we're promising we're going to build another 500 in the next four years. Well, you know what? We got a waiting list. The waiting list is seven and a half years. If we're not achieving it with 138, we're falling behind. How are we going to achieve it with 125 and, and, and continue that? So I don't agree with that. We got to look at different solutions. We got to look at inland. And we got to try to start building. Otherwise, you know what? We're never going to catch up. I don't care what if we're better than the next region, in the end of the day, this is my home and this is what I want to fight for. I don't compare myself to the next neighbor or next neighbor or the other township. Is no, I compare myself to my own house. We want to make sure of becoming the number one. You know, and that's what I look at. You know, and this is the thing we need to change. And this is why I looked at it to build a new a new hospital. Our population in our region has grown to 600,000. By, by 2030, it's going to be 750,000. The City Run River Hospital is already over capacity by 125, 130%. What is going to happen when we hit 750,000 people? Those are the things that I look at the future as a businessman who has been in the business over 31 years, have five kids, and my wife here. You know what? They all grew in the business. And they all have a common sense business. And this is what we need to do. We can't sit around and pat each other and say, well, you did a good job. We built 138 uh, affordable housing. That's not the way on my book. And it doesn't matter who's sitting with me on that ho uh, ho uh, house shoes, host shoes. It's going to have to change his mind and have to be different vision. Have to have a different idea to make things work better. Because the way they've been going on it, it's not working. It's not working. So we need to help the people. And uh, I only got 30 seconds. And the last thing I want to talk about it is the transportation system. You know what? We got lots of people who cannot afford to buy passes for the buses. We got the Grand River uh, Transit going by empty. And I see it in my office on the, on the north here. You know what? Give the people the passes, free passes. They cannot afford to buy it. Give it to them. The bus is going empty. We subsidize that train, uh, bus every day. Why not let people use it? You know, it's there. It's there for us to use it. It's not because we're going to make money out of it. That's not the idea behind it. Thank you very much. Vote J on uh, October 22nd, or you can go on my site, votej.ca, and uh, hopefully I'll answer all the questions for you. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Yeah. This has been a great afternoon. I want to thank all of you for coming and the organizers for uh, planning this. You know, municipal elections matter. They matter because the decisions that we make every day affect you, your family, your businesses, and the quality of life we enjoy in this community practically the next day. 
This election will be about leadership for the region. Um, for the first time in 33 years, we will not have an incumbent running. We have a choice about leadership style and about substance. And I tell you that I think that the leader of Waterloo Region is all about influence. It's not about having power. It's influence around the horseshoe when you talk to your regional uh, council colleagues. It's finding common ground with the province so that they can help be partners in funding um, major things like the infrastructure, like Two Day All Way Go, the LRT. And it's like forming partnerships with the federal government who last year put $15.9 billion on the table to help address affordable housing throughout the uh, country. This is my hometown. I grew up in Preston, Cambridge. I met my husband Warren at Eastwood Collegiate. We raised our four children here, and I now have the pleasure of watching my children raise our five grandchildren. We're very egalitarian in letting them raise the grandchildren. <laughs> People come to Waterloo Region, whether it's to college, university, they come for business, they love the quality of life, and they stay. They love that we're innovative, that we're entrepreneurial, and that we're prosperous. Our prosperity means different things for different people. And at the table I was at, we were talking about the difference between somebody being homeless, needing supportive housing, and needing affordable housing. We talked about solutions for the opioid crisis and the fact that people continue to die every day. These are our neighbors. These are the people that live down the street, that live across the um, community. We look after, at the regional level, all the really important things that matter to you. Police services, social housing, social services, child care, land use, and we had a great discussion, and a shout out to the university students who are here. <laughs> Public service is not just about what we do, but how we choose to do it. And we have a proud history in this region of rolling up our sleeves, working together collaboratively, collaboratively to find solutions for complex questions. I would love to continue to lead that uh, kind of collaboration as we go forward. My plank, one of my major planks in my platform, and I invite you to go to karen-redman.com to see everything, but is having a Waterloo Regional Chairs Community Advisory Committee, because what you say matters and what you think matters, and the input we get from citizens makes for better legislation and better decisions. I make you two promises. I don't come with a laundry list, but my two promises are I work hard to uh, represent your priorities and I will be accountable to you. I ask for your support on October 22nd.